Sony FX30. <laughs> I can barely keep my composure. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Look, we got the Sony FX30, man, and we've had this camera for quite some time now. Um, I'm gonna say maybe it's been, I'm gonna say two to three months. Um, as you guys know, I am a diehard Canon fan, but Canon, unfortunately, you know, they stopped the RF mounts, you know, from being, I guess, released to other companies. So, you know, the, the lenses for this camera is it's a little too much. You know, I kind of want me to, you know, want to get a 24 to 70 millimeter for my Canon. Also want to go ahead and get the 15 to 35 for this Canon. But those lenses are like, it, it, they just, almost $3,000 or even, it don't even matter if they're almost $3,000, they're over, over $1,500. And it's just crazy, man. So like I said, I picked up the Sony FX30 just because it does have that Sony email. And as you guys all know, Sony, you know, has a pretty much an unlimited amount of freaking lenses right now. And they're all not super duper expensive. So I'm here to talk to you guys about my personal experience with the Sony FX30. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys about the specs, so I don't think so, just because, I mean, I think that you guys hopefully would know a little bit of something, you know, a little something, something about this camera. But I am going to start off with saying this. I do love it, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know what that means, yo, but something about the camera, um, it makes me feel like I'm shooting million dollar, uh, million dollar <sighs> projects, I guess I should say. It's right, yeah. I am a videographer here in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so I pretty much picked this Sony FX30 for two reasons. One reason is because I wanted a smaller camera so I can make short form content and also um, just videos in general. Just because, you know, my R5 is $38.99 or I'm gonna say $4,000 for the camera. Then I gotta go hook up one of my lenses to make it almost like a $5,000 camera. So I wanted to go give me something a little bit cheaper, you know, so I can get content made faster. Um, you know, and also feel comfortable with doing so. You know, I don't like to lug around this R5 every single day with me and throw it around everywhere just because this is my daily drive. This is a camera that I personally use for everything that you guys pretty much have seen so far. Um, I made one Sony FX30 video, probably two on this channel so far. And you know, you you may you may have seen a difference, you know, in quality. Um, not, not saying anything bad, not saying anything bad at all, but the Sony FX30, I, I love the camera, but I just don't like it. And the reason why I say I don't like the camera just because um, I'm so used to using my R5. There's a lot of features that's on the R5 or just in Canon in general that Sony doesn't have. The first thing that I really don't like about this Sony FX30 is that although the screen is touchscreen, it ain't it ain't touchscreen enough. <laughs> like on my on this camera right here, this R5, I can touch the aperture, I can touch my shutter speed, and I can touch the ISO and I can stop recording on the screen. I can hit this Q button on the screen. On this FX30, you can't do none of that. Like, this, this is what I have. And it's a black screen, obviously, right now, but as you see, I can't touch anything that's down here. I have to use these dials. I have to hit the function key. Then I get a, a list of things. But once I get the list of things, they're still not, you know, they're still not the stuff that I actually need. On this Canon, I get to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. I don't even have to, like, I'm so lazy, I guess, as a, I, I'm not saying, you, I guess you guys can call me lazy because I don't use all of these functions and all of these buttons and the scroll dials and stuff to change, you know, all my features, you know. that That's just me. I've been, you know, raised to do what I want to do on my Canon, and Sony doesn't have it. That's cool. That, that That's it. But surprisingly enough to me on my end, that's literally all I hate about this camera <laughs> Dude, that's literally it everything else is great coming down from the camera specs the lens selection duh come on now and then on top of it even the video quality the screen quality on this camera it, it just it just feels right i even love the build out of the camera like i have enough hand grip in here like this feels comfortable com <laughs> comfortable enough for me to hold my you know hold this camera like this even the screen it, even the screen is great it's like you know on the sony fx30 you don't get i mean on the fx on, on the sony a7s3 or even sony a7 III in general you don't get this you don't get this feature at all you gotta you know you got that little pop-up screen you know we we, we yeah, we got that. We got that. I love this. I really do love it. You know, it's really great. Um, so anyway, like I said, I took this camera on a couple of client events, uh, client shoots, I'm going to say, or even client events too. And we got some great quality footage from it. 
Now, I've been pairing this Sony FX30 up with the Saray 33 millimeter. Uh, this lens right here is going to come in the f1.2 aperture, so it's really fast, really sharp. Um, well, I ain't gonna say it's really sharp, <laughs> I can't say it's sharp, I really can't. The lens itself ain't sharp, that'll be in a different video. So, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if, if you do want a full review of this Saray 33 millimeter lens because we got some stuff to talk about, <laughs> but anyway. Back to the FX30, man. Like I said, it's a lovable camera. Uh, just coming down from the quality specs, obviously, you know, it's used. It's very, it's, it's user friendly um, to some extent. Uh, some of you guys, some of the Sony users, they do know are some people that are actually on Canon. They may have seen, you know, the Sony menu, and they're just like, oh heck, you no! Know, like I'm not jumping over there because my menu is just so simple and their menu is so complex. I'm gonna be honest with you. I said the same exact thing when I was holding a Sony. Um, FX, I mean, Sony, I don't know, I keep saying FX3, but if I, when I was holding a Sony a7 III, the menu was just terrible. But this camera menu right here, oh yeah, this actually is pretty good. The, uh, this is this is something that's updated, I believe, so I'm not for sure if it's exclusive only to like the cinema lineup, but this right here is so easy. Everything is pretty much almost considerable like Canon. You get your menus right here. Um, I hope this isn't upside down for y'all at all, because it's definitely upside down for me. But if it is, my apologies. <laughs> but it's, you know, the, the menu on this FX30 is very simple and it's not complex as the other stuff is. Now there's obviously some stuff in here that I haven't learned and that's just simple because I'm not taking enough time to actually, you know, like go through it. You know, I'm just running and gunning with it, but you know, ideally I shouldn't be doing that. Um, so pretty much what I do is anytime I do have a client shoot, I know it's strictly video only, only strictly video. I'm leaving this off hour at home and I'm taking my FX30 with me. I haven't had any complaints about anything like when it came down to quality wise. The autofocus is, oh my God. The autofocus is crazy, yo. When I tell you this is crazy, I always knew Sony uh, autofocus was just a little bit better than Canon, um, but I didn't believe you. Know, I was one of those, nah, bro. Yeah, ain't no Sony camera out here better than my R5. <laughs> Man, this camera only cost me $1,700. <laughs> The autofocus here is great, I, I must say. I must say. <laughs> now, the low light capabilities in this camera, oh, that's that's doodle. I'm gonna be real, which is straight trash. I believe that 2500 ISO is probably gonna be like the max you will wanna go to when it's when you're like in a low light situation. That's gonna probably be that last bracket for you to not get, you know, too much, too much noise. Um, now in the Sony FX3, I believe you can go down to 12. I'm gonna say 12800 probably, something like that. Um, so yeah, and I was kind of you know confused on that, but I guess it's because it's a full frame camera versus APS-C camera. Who knows, what do you do? Um, I, I don't shoot in low light like that a lot, but I would, you know, I'm, I'd just be testing the waters out sometime. You know, if my camera, if my own light camera, you know, die, uh, I mean, my own light, yeah, my on camera light, if that dies, then yeah, I gotta shoot, you know, just like this. But then again, since I do have the F1.2 lens, you know, I, I pretty, you know, pretty much didn't need a lot of stuff. So yeah, that's that, man. Um, there's really not much for me to say about this camera. This is more of a simple fact that it's really not for me. Um, I truthfully tried to keep it. Um, I really want to keep it, but this for my needs and what I truthfully want, uh, I got to send it back. I, I truthfully got to send it back. You know, I'm a, I'm a miss, I'm a miss her, but this isn't, this isn't me. It's a cinema camera that has nothing to do with it all. The color grading has nothing to do with it. I can, I can literally sit here and learn it. It's just a simple fact that I, I, I love Canon. <laughs> I, I got to say, I, I just love Canon. Uh, I'm not ready to jump ship. Now, I don't think I ever will be ready to jump ship from Canon to Sony. I really don't. No matter what I say, I've been doing research and research and research. This is actually the first time I've actually kept the Sony camera for this long. Normally I get it, shoot it, hate it, send it back. This right here, I've been shooting with it. I got multiple projects that I've shot with this camera. Even did a couple pictures. Can't show you guys that was just because, you know, of contracts and that, you know, contract, you know, we saw whatever. So I can't show you guys none of that footage, unfortunately, but this camera does take a couple great pictures. Um, but yeah, overall, it's just not for me. And I truthfully think that this camera is for people that want to get into the cinema film, but they don't want to spend, you know, two, 
well, I'm gonna say $3,000 just on the camera itself. Maybe all you do have is $3,000, cool. Go get your Sony FX30 for like $1,700. I think as of today, maybe uh, $1,598 still. Then I picked up a couple of lenses. Yes, a couple, not just one, not just two. Maybe, maybe, maybe just two, maybe just two. But you maybe can stretch out the three, man. You may can. <laughs> so yeah, for anybody that wants to get in the cinema lineup, this camera right here is gonna be perfect for you. It's perfect, it's a starter, great menu system, great quality. I believe it's gonna be uh, 6K down sample or 6K over sample, 4K, whatever they wanna call it. I never get the terminologies right when it comes down to that, but it's a 6K sensor. I'm gonna say that's down sample to four or either over sample for one of the two somebody correct me down in the comment section <laughs> but you know exactly what i mean so yeah i love this camera but i don't like it um yeah man this is this is cool this is this cool it's been a great time with the sony fx30 um i think i am going to stick with my cannons for the rest of my life until they prove me otherwise um yeah i hate to see it go but you gotta go, man. You gotta go. <laughs> but that's all we got for you guys today on this video about the Sony FX30. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Are you guys gonna pick this camera up or are you guys just like me, a diehard Canon fan, cannot even leave Canon, shouldn't even, even trade it on Canon, shouldn't even bought the freaking Sony. Are you guys like that? <laughs> just let me know down below in the comment section. And until next time, you guys, the brand is out. Peace.